For the past 30 years, I've spent and focused my entire professional work on what do effective leaders really do? And for the past decade, I've spent and focused my energy looking at what do innovative leaders do that make companies very innovative? And here's the deal. So many senior leaders everywhere on the face of planet Earth are really good at talking about innovation, but very few of them excel at being innovative themselves. Now, where did I come to that conclusion from? Well, it started about 15 years ago. Engaged in a research project with Clayton Christensen at Harvard Business School and Jeff Dyer at BYU, we were trying to figure out what kinds of leaders, what kinds of leaders create companies that in Clayton Christensen's terms are disruptive? You know, what do those leaders do? How do they behave? How do they act? How do they get the ideas that actually led to these companies that changed entire industries? And so we ended up trying to figure out, okay, who should we interview? Who should we talk to? And here's what we did. We, we looked at the entire universe of companies with a $10 billion market capitalization and higher on, on the entire earth, everywhere. And we ranked them by what we call an innovation premium. And what that premium is, is if you look at a share price for a stock, let's say the share price is $185. And you've got $100 of that that is attributable to the cash flows from existing businesses. In other words, you've got businesses that are churning out products and services, and I'll pay you, you know, $100 of the share price for what you're already doing. But there's this premium that some companies get because investors believe that you're not only going to do what you do today, but you're going to do something different tomorrow new products, new services, new businesses, new business models, something new, something different that you're not doing today. So we're going to give you an $85 premium because we have that much confidence that you're going to be doing something new and different. Well, we looked all over the world and we discovered the companies with the highest innovation premiums and we interviewed the leaders, the founders of those companies to figure out what were they doing when they got the initial ideas that led to these companies that generated such high innovation premiums? And we discovered they did five things. They were incredibly good at asking catalytic questions. These are the ones that transform what is to what might be. They're able to provoke the status quo with their questions. But if all they did was ask questions, they'd just be annoying. <laughs> and so they take responsibility for getting answers to them personally. They ask the question, they get out of their offices, they get into the world, and they start to collect data. They observe, like anthropologists, to get new insights. They watch people using their products and services. They watch entire processes in an organization. They get insights from that. They network and talk to people who aren't like them, because if I'm trying to get a new idea for a great new business, if I talk to people who are just like me, there's gonna be no sparks going on upstairs. They also experiment by going small, fast, cheap, just trying this, trying that, trying this, trying that, trying to figure out a creative, productive, good so solution to a problem. And intellectually, they think associationally because they connect the unconnected and create combinations that nobody else does. So we interviewed those folks, Jeff Bezos at Amazon, for example, and um, asked him, what were you doing? And lo and behold, that's what he did. He's a fantastic questioner. He's an exceptional experimenter. He's really good at observing and watching the world, and he builds an organization that essentially is like him. And that's what the world's most innovative companies are. They embed these innovation skills deep within their organization so that not just senior leaders, but everyone can innovate, creatively problem solve, and build better products, build better services, and build better organizations, ones that create new and better things. So now we're in 2015, and this year we're coming out with a list of the world's most innovative companies. And on the top of that list is Tesla Motors. They have an 85% innovation premium. 
So the question becomes, if you look inside of those innovative companies, what makes them innovative? How do you as a leader develop and build an organization that's sustainably creative in a way that actually generates value vis-a-vis -vis the innovation premium? One of the things we know is that innovative companies, they're led by innovative leaders. It sounds simple, but it's easier said than done. And what I mean by that, and what we mean by that, is that if you look at the top leadership in an innovative company, high innovation premium, a Tesla Motors with Elon Musk as a founder and others in the senior leadership roles, or you look at Salesforce.com with Mark Benioff and other senior leaders in that company, you'll notice that they themselves engage in innovation work to get creative solutions to problems. They don't just tell other people to do it, but they do it themselves. And in fact, they spend twice as much time as CEOs at non-innovative companies doing the innovation work, questioning, observing, experimenting, networking, talking, getting ideas, making them happen. Twice as much time, four months out of the year, innovative CEO, innovative company, two months out of the year at a non-innovative company, non-innovative CEO. So essentially, these are leaders on the innovation word who truly walk the talk. So clearly, at the top of these innovative companies, you have senior leaders, often founders, but not necessarily, who are innovative themselves. They engage these innovation skills to creatively solve problems that matter. But they don't just expect themselves to innovate, they expect everyone in the system to do the same. And this comes to a process and a people issue where it's not just they themselves are innovators, but they hire and they promote and they reward other people who are also creatively solving problems by using these innovation skills in their everyday work. So for example, if you are getting hired at Tesla Motors, one of the things they're going to ask you is, now tell me about one of the most complex, difficult problems you've ever solved. They're curious about, you know, how difficult are the problems, but also how does a person go about solving them? And once they get through that sieve of indeed demonstrating by their past experience, they like to tackle tough, big problems, then they bring them in the system and actually give them tough, big problems. The current chief information officer, or CIO at Tesla, is Jay Vijayan, and he was working at VMware, doing extremely well in the software CIO, in, in, the, in the information systems role there, and he ended up getting hired away from VMware, partly because Elon Musk basically convinced him that if he came to Tesla Motors, he would be changing the world by what he was doing. And then once he came into the system, because indeed he was good at solving tough, complex problems, then, you know, they gave him a tough, complex problem. Here was the deal. They told him, Jay, we'd like you in three months to build an entire enterprise-level software system for one-fifth the cost of the typical ones that are off the shelf. <laughs> it was an enormous task. And then Elon basically said, I'm going to do whatever I can, Jay, in order to make that happen. And he did. And they did. And now they have a system of information flow that they never could have achieved with, with off-the-shelf enterprise-level software products that is rapidly and quickly giving them all the data they need in order to solve real problems. And so that's the deal. It's like, again, innovation is not just a word. It's a word put into practice by an organization that expects people to be innovative, but also gives them the support, the resources, the capacity to do the same.